ever wonder, why does it seem so hard to pray for myself? Do you often find it's easier to pray for other people than it is to pray for yourself? I know I do. I can pray for my husband, my children, other family members, acquaintances, friends, and people I've never even met whom I've heard about on the news. Far easier than I can pray for my own needs. For one thing, their needs are easy for me to identify. Mine are numerous, sometimes complicated, often difficult to determine, and certainly not easy to label. We women know what we think we need, most of the time anyway. We're able to recognize the obvious, but often we're so involved in praying for the people around us that we don't take time to figure out how we should be praying for ourselves, beyond the immediate and urgent, And sometimes we can be so overwhelmed by our circumstances that our prayer is simply a basic cry for help. And there's nothing wrong with that. But do you ever have times when your life seems out of control? Do you ever feel pressured, as if your days are so busy that you fear you're missing out on a certain quality of life because of that? Do you worry that you're neglecting one or more areas of your life because you're trying to fill numerous roles and meet many expectations? I've experienced that too. Have you ever felt as if your life is stuck in one place and you're going nowhere? Or worse yet, you're going backwards? Have you had times when you've lost your vision for the future? Or do you feel you never really had one to begin with? Have you wondered whether you can actually move into the full purpose and destiny that God has for you? Have you experienced feelings of emptiness, frustration, or unfulfillment? Well, I too have felt all those things. Do you hunger for a greater sense of the Lord's presence in your life? Do you desire to know God in a deeper way? Do you want to serve him better and more completely, but don't feel you have the time or the energy or the opportunity to do so? Do you need to spend more time with him in prayer? Do you want your prayers to be accompanied by greater faith so that you can see greater answers to them? Do you need a more complete knowledge and understanding of God's word? Well, if you have said yes to any of the questions I have asked you, The good news is that this is the way God wants you to feel. God wants you to long for his presence. He wants you to find your fulfillment in him and nothing else. He wants you to walk closely with him. He wants you to increase in faith and knowledge of his word. He wants you to put all your hopes and dreams in his hands and look to him to meet all of your needs. When you do that, he will open the storehouse of his blessings upon your life. That's because those things are his will for you. But none of this happens without prayer. This book, The Power of a Praying Woman, is about you and your needs. Every woman has needs, but many of us are guilty of looking to other people to meet them, especially the men in our lives. Too often we expect them to meet the needs that only God can fill. And then we are disappointed when they can't. We expect too much from them when our expectations should be in God. Of course, there are things we can and should expect from our husband. We can expect fidelity, kindness, love, care, emotional, physical, and financial support, and common decency. And we must provide all of those things to his life as well. But beyond those things, we will never be completely happy until we make God the source of our fulfillment and the answer to our longings. I know that putting our expectations in the Lord is easier said than done. So let's start with the easy part. Let's say to God, Lord, I look to you for everything I need in my life. Help me to put my expectations in you. And whenever you are disappointed because your needs are not being met, talk to yourself and say, my soul 
Wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. That's from Psalm 62, 5. Then tell God about all your needs and everything that is in your heart. Don't worry, he won't be surprised or shocked. He already knows. He's just waiting to hear it from you. I remember when I was in high school and had to take a required swimming class one semester. I hated it because it was at 7.30 every morning and my hair was ruined for the rest of the day. There weren't any portable hair dryers back then, if you can even imagine such primitive times, and swimming caps were worthless. We had to swim daily, rain or shine, and it could get quite cold on those foggy California winter mornings. The only way I could be excused from swimming was if I were dying. And even then, I had to have a note from the doctor. In spite of the misery of that experience, I loved swimming, and I became fairly good at it. I learned that if I was positioned correctly and did all the right moves, I could go forward quickly in the water. It became a smooth maneuver that would get me speedily to the other side of the giant pool. And nothing would make me falter, not even turbulence from the other swimmers on either side of me. The same principle is true for us. If we want to successfully navigate the waters of our lives, we must position ourselves correctly and learn all the right moves. If we don't, when we come to turbulent situations, we will not be able to navigate through them. We will end up flailing around and exhausting ourselves just trying to stay afloat, and we will never actually get anywhere. But when we position ourselves under the headship of Christ and learn to do what he requires of us, there is a flow of the Holy Spirit that will carry us wherever we need to go. The way we learn what God expects of us is by reading his word. We can't begin to make the right moves if we don't know what they are. And we can study all we want in this holy manual of life and learn everything we're supposed to do. But at some point, we still have to jump in the water. The proof of our sincerity is in the doing, not just the knowing. It's one thing to make a list of do's and don'ts, but it's quite another to have a heart for God's ways and a soul that longs to live them out. It's one thing to read about life. It's another to live it. Obedience is something you do. Having a heart to obey is something you pray about. I hear the same plea from women all over the world. We know a lot about what we're supposed to be doing, but we often have a hard time doing it. We must pray that God will enable us to be disciplined enough to do what we need to do. Now, I'm a fairly disciplined person for the most part, but I wasn't always that way. There was a time in my life when I was the exact opposite. I was plagued with depression. And as many of you who have been depressed know, you can't think clearly or organize your life well when you are struggling to find a reason to live. You are unable to do the things that are good for you because you don't know if you're worth it. You don't move forward in your life because it takes all your energy just to survive each day. When I started learning to pray about every aspect of my life, I asked God to help me be disciplined enough to be daily in his word, to pray faithfully, and to take the steps of obedience I needed to take. I asked him to deliver me from depression and anything else that kept me from all he had for me. And I was surprised at how quickly God answered those prayers. I have become disciplined, organized, and obedient beyond what I believe are my natural capabilities. I am still learning new levels of obedience, however, even after 50 years of walking with God. My body is getting older, but as a result of obeying God in new ways, my spirit is being renewed with each passing year. And with each new step of obedience I take, I experience new blessings and new freedoms 
I have not known before and actually never thought possible. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that once you are saved, you don't have to put forth any effort. That's like getting married and never taking a shower again. You might be able to get away with it for a while, but it's risky business, and your quality of life will definitely suffer. Learning obedience is a lifelong process. There are always new dimensions of it to conquer. Even if you have walked with the Lord for 40 years, you still need to ask God to show you any area where you are not being obedient. We get into trouble when we think we know what to do. and We stop asking God if we're doing it. The Bible says we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. That's from Hebrews 2.1. We can never get prideful about how perfectly we are obeying God because He is continually stretching us and asking us to move into new levels of growth. Nor can we go to the other extreme saying, this is just the kind of person I am, undisciplined and unteachable. We have no excuse for not doing what we need to do when God says he will enable us to do it if we will just call upon him for help. All we have to say is, Lord, help me to be disciplined enough to obey you the way you want me to so I can become the person you created me to be. Without the perfecting, balancing, refining work of his Holy Spirit, the freedom you have in Christ will turn into a license to do anything you want. We all have to do things we don't want to do. And even the greatest of jobs, there are still aspects of it that we don't enjoy. But part of being successful in life means doing things we would rather not. When we do things we don't like simply because we know we need to do them, it builds character in us. It makes us disciplined. It forms us into a leader God can trust. And there is always a price to pay when we forsake the things we need to do in order to do only the things we feel like doing. We must be willing to make sacrifices for the blessings we want. When you find it difficult to do what you know you need to do, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Of course, you still have to take the first step, no matter how daunting, intimidating, dreadful, or uncomfortable, or, or distasteful. But when you do, the Holy Spirit will assist you the rest of the way. God says in Ezekiel 36, 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. If you have a hard time praying for yourself, ask God to help you do it. God has great plans for you. He has important things he wants you to do, and he is preparing you for your destiny right now. But you have to take steps of obedience in order to get there. And you have to trust that he knows the way and won't hurt you in the process. God's rules are for our benefit, not to make us miserable. When we live by them, life works. When we don't, life falls apart. When we obey, we have clarity. When we don't, we have confusion. And there is a definite connection between obedience and the love of God. Even though God loves us, we won't sense his love if we are walking in disobedience to his ways. There's also a direct connection between obedience and getting your prayers answered. It's in 1 John 3, 22. If you have been frustrated because you don't see answers to your prayers, ask God if it is because of disobedience. Say, Lord, is there any area in my life where I'm not obeying you? Don't keep telling God what you want without asking him what he wants. You never know when you will step into the moment for which God has been preparing you. And it is not just one moment, it's many successive ones. It doesn't matter whether you are a single career woman or a married lady with nine children under the age of 10. It doesn't matter whether you are 19 or 90. God is preparing you daily for something great. He wants you to be willing to let him purify you, fortify you, and grow you up in him. 
but you have to play by the rules. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.5, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. In other words, you can't swim into the mainstream of those moments successfully if you're not doing all the right moves now. Would you pray with me about this? Lord, my heart wants to obey you in all things. Show me where I'm not doing that. If there are steps of obedience I need to take that I don't understand, I pray you would open my eyes to see the truth and help me to take those steps. I know I can't do everything right without your help, so I ask that you would enable me to live in obedience to your ways. I seek you with my whole heart. Help me not to wander from your commandments. Your word says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth isn't in us. I don't want to deceive myself by not asking you where I'm missing the mark you have set for my life. Reveal to me when I am not doing things I should be doing. Show me if I'm doing things I should not be doing. Help me to hear your specific instructions to me. Help me to be ever learning about your ways so I can live in the fullness of your presence and move into all you have for me. Lord, I put my future in your hands and ask that you would give me total peace about it. I don't want to be trying to secure my future with my own plans. I want to be in the center of your plans, knowing that you have given me everything I need for what is ahead. I pray you would give me strength to endure without giving up. You have said that he who endures to the end will be saved. Help me to run the race in a way that I shall finish strong and receive the prize you have for me. Help me to always be able to pray about my walk with you so that I live your way. I humble myself under your mighty hand, O oh God, knowing that you will lift me up in due time. I cast all my care upon you, knowing that you care for me and will not let me fall. I reach out for your hand today so I can walk with you into the future you have for me. In Jesus' name I pray. You know, the Bible says in 1 John 3.22, whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, I want to leave you with a few personal words for you. Remember, my precious sister in the Lord, that walking with God doesn't mean there won't be obstacles. There will be. God's plan for your life won't happen without a struggle. So don't give up when times get tough. Just keep on doing what's right and resist the temptation to quit. Ask God to give you the strength and endurance you need to do what you must do. Don't judge your future by what you read in the newspapers or the words someone spoke over you one time. Your future is in God's hands. The only thing that is important is what He says about it. He doesn't want you to be concerned about your future anyway. He wants you to be concerned with him because he is your future. Remember that you are God's daughter and he loves you. As you walk with him, you will become more like him every day. As you look to him, you will be transformed into his same image from glory to glory. That's what it says in 2 Corinthians 3.18. As you live with him, he will take you from strength to strength. Don't become discouraged if things don't happen as fast as you would like them to. They never do. God wants you to learn patience. Our perspective is temporal. His is eternal. So don't be concerned if you are not seeing all that you want in response to your prayers. You will. If you draw close to God and do what he asks you to do, if you worship him in spirit and in truth, if you love others and give of yourself to them, if you speak God's word in faith and pray, you will see God's blessings poured out on your life. God says to you from Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. 
thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call on me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart.